Uh, actually, our, our own constellation of satellites. Uh, but, but that same satellite bus and the technology we developed can also be used for science, earth science, and space science, um, as well as uh, you know, other potential applications that, that others may have. Um, so we're, we're open to both uh, building our own as well as, uh, we're definitely going to build our own, but we're also, it's something that we'll be able to offer to others. Um, and the, the focus is going to be on creating a global communication system. Uh, this would be, this is quite an ambitious effort. So it's, it's we're really talking about something which is, uh, it's in the long term, it would be like rebuilding the internet in space. Um, and uh, the goal will be to uh, have a majority of long distance internet traffic go over this network. And about 10% of local consumer and business traffic. Um, so that's, uh, uh, you know, it's still in the, probably the 90% the, the of, of people's local access will still come from fiber, but we'll, we'll do about 10% uh, of business and consumer direct, and then more than half, I think, of the, the long distance uh, traffic. Um, as, as you guys may know, the speed of light in, in uh, vacuum is somewhere 40 to 50% uh, faster than in, in, in fiber. So you can actually do long distance uh, communication faster if you route it through vacuum than you can if you route it through fiber. Um, you can also, uh, it, can, it can go through much, uh, far fewer hops. So normally when something, if, if, let's say you want to communicate from uh, Seattle to South Africa. Um, if you look at the actual path that it takes, it's extremely convoluted. It'll follow the outline of the continents. It'll go through 200 routers and repeaters, and the latency is extremely bad. Whereas if you did it with a satellite network, you could actually do it in two or three hops. Yeah, well, maybe four hops. It depends on what the altitude of the satellites are um, and what the, what the cost things are. But, but basically, with, with the, let's say, at least an order of magnitude fewer um, repeaters or routers, and, uh, and then going through space at 50% you know, faster speed of light. So it's sort of, inherent, from a physics standpoint, inherently better to do the long distance uh, internet traffic through space. Um, and then space is also really good for sparse connectivity. So if you've got large swaths of land uh, where there's um, uh, uh, you know, a relatively low density of users, uh, space is actually ideal for that. Um, it, would, it would also be able to service, you know, like I said, like, for like 10% of people in, in relatively dense urban and suburban environments. And, uh, and so in cases where people have you know, sort of stuck with Time Warner or Comcast or something, this would provide an opportunity uh, to, to escape their budget. So it, it's, it's something that would both provide optionality for people in, with, in living in advanced uh, countries, uh, as, you know, advanced economies, as well as people in poor countries that uh, don't even have electricity or fiber or anything like that. So it's a, a real enabler uh, for people in, in poor regions of the world, and it's, a, it's, it's a, it gives optionality for people in, in wealthier countries. So I think it's, it's something that definitely needs to be done, and it's a, it's a really difficult technical problem to solve. So that's why we need the, the smartest engineering talent in the world to, to solve the, the problem. Um, and uh, you know, at the same time, we also make sure we don't need, we don't create Skynet. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> we, ironically. The server room at SpaceX jokingly was called Skynet. <laughs> the fate has a great sense of irony. <laughs> and so we really need to make sure that doesn't come true. Um, but but that's, um, I, I think as, as for technically aware audience, the, 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 if there's some AI apocalypse, it's going to come from some collection of, of sort of vast server farms terrestrially based, not by the space-based communication system. <laughs> I did think about that. But... <laughs> um, anyway, so I, I, I think this is sort of like a, a fundamentally good thing to do. Um, I, I can't think of any sort of major downsides. It seems like it's an important thing to do. It's something that should should happen. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and I think it's something where probably designed to give people uh, gigabit level access uh, you know, kind of 20, 30 millisecond latency um, everywhere on Earth. Uh, that, that, that would be pretty great. Um, and then that, that same system we could leverage to put it into a constellation on Mars, 
because Mars is going to need a global communication system too. <laughs> and there's no, there's no fiber optics or wires or anything uh, on Mars. So we're, we're definitely going to need that. We're going to need um, high uh, uh, bandwidth communications between Earth and, and Mars. So I think a lot of what we uh, do in developing an Earth-based communication system can be leveraged for Mars as well. Um, crazy as that may sound. So, um, 